Okay, so we're going to start off with a simple tutorial. This is going to show you how to create a transition work item that can send you to a location that you can return to exactly where you were. This is going to use a simple event that tracks the player's location and returns them to where they were. We're also going to see how to keep it from messing up And that's it. So let's get down to how this works. And to see how this works, we're just going to delete everything to start from the beginning. I'll leave my variables in. So this is pretty self explanatory. We're going to create an item that gets used. I called it the homework, assigned it an icon. There's nothing over here. It's going to call common event 2, which we'll come to later. I made it not consumable, but if you wanted a situation where you have to pay a price to buy these things that maybe transition your player to a private home base or to a pocket dimension or to the deck of an airship or whatever, you can make it consumable. So you have to carry them if they want to use them. You can make it any type of item. I put scope none because it's not for designed to be used on an individual or anything like that. It's going to carry the whole party. And we want it to only be used from the menu screen because it's not something that should be used in battle. And then this part down here doesn't matter. So, to kick this off, the first thing we're going to want to do is track the player. Now, this is going to be run on a parallel process that turns on on an initialize switch, which we're going to turn on at the very beginning of the game. At the very beginning of the game, the initialize switch is going to be turned on, which puts this into a parallel process. Since it's a common event, it's constantly being called on as a parallel process. You need to be careful that you don't run too many parallel processes at the same time or you will lag up your game. So this event is going to be tracking the player. What we want to do is grab a variable, call it player x. It's going to track game data. It's going to follow the player. It's going to follow the player's map x. We're also going to create a couple more. I just did Control C to copy and Control V to paste. But we're going to change them. We're also going to keep track of the player's Y. We don't want to keep track of this event. We want the player. We want the player's map Y. So by these two alone, we're keeping track of wherever the player is on the current map they're on. But we're also going to want to track what map the player is on as well. Now that's independent of the character on the map. This is just wherever the scene is going on that, that's going to be the map ID. So that's all this does is keep track of the player's current location at all times. We're going to create another event that's called homework. And this one is actually going to create a new variable, the player's x2, so it's still keeping track of the player's map x, but it's setting it to its own independent variable that is not constantly being kept track of. And we're going to do the same thing for the map y. as well as the map ID. 
So if you can tell what's going on so far, this is going to be constantly tracking the player. When we use our item, our home warp, see how it calls the event home warp over here now. When you use the item, it's going to tell us, hey, grab the current position of the player's X and Y and their map ID and store it. Because we're going to use them right here. In this case, we want to send the player to a static location. In this case, we're going to send them to a special little house here that they can work to anytime they want. And why does it store these variables if we're just sending the player to where they're going? And why are we tracking the player? Well, what we're going to do is go to our transition map. And we're going to set up below characters. I'm going to do player touch. So whenever, whenever the player walks on this space, we're going to transfer the player either x2 notice this is id map id always comes first here either x2 and either y2 so now whenever we go here through our home warp and we try to leave it's going to return us to wherever we were before because this gets that information just before we transfer. Now keep in mind, if the player is on this map and they use that home warp, that sets their new coordinates. So when they get here to transfer, they're gonna go back to wherever they were on this map. But before we get to fixing that, let's set up our initialization in there. Because we still need this to run. So as soon as we start the game, This is going to turn on the initialize switch, which tells the game to start keeping track of where the player is. For the purposes of this demonstration, I want the player to go ahead and have the homework item. However you give it to them, or when you give it to them, it's up to you. I usually do one of these for a tutorial zone, so the player can always return to the tutorial zone. And then we're going to control the self switch. Now we need to tell it to do this stuff. So it needs to go to auto run and self switch. So once we load in the game, it's going to turn on the switch. It keeps track of the player's location. It's going to give us the item that's going to allow us to work to that house. And it's going to turn on this switch, which tells this event to go to this page. And it's going to always be on this page now which doesn't do anything, which is fine. We don't want it to do anything. Then when we use our homework item, it's going to take us here, but before it does, it grabs a variable that gets our X position, Y position, and map ID. That's going to be the X2, Y2, and map ID2. And it's going to bring us here. And then when we step on this space, it's going to return us to where we were. Now, as of right now, we're not really making use of the X1 and Y1, but I want to set this up for later because future demonstrations will make more actual use of those. For example, if you're doing a screen transition with a map edge transition, you can use that for that. But we'll get to that in a future tutorial. For now, remember I said if we use our home, whistle, our home warp here, it's going to simply take these variables and now it's going to say we are where we were on this map before we used it and we're on this map. So if we get to here, it's going to send us right back to where we were. We're not going to be able to get it back to map one. So to correct that, we want to go in here and we're going to say conditional branch. We want this map ID, the one that's constantly being tracked. I'm going to set it to two, and I'll show you why in a second.
So it's going to say if our map ID equals two, and that's the map ID that's constantly being tracked, not this one down here. If our map ID is equal to two, tell the player they're already in this location and quit. Don't do anything else. Now the reason we want map ID two in this case is because if we look right up here, this is map ID two. So if the player's here, it's getting that value. They're saying, if we're on this map, don't transition to this map. Otherwise, wherever we were, send us back there. So of course we need to play test this and make sure it works. So as of right now, it should be tracking my current location. And it should have given me the whistle or the warp. And if I use it, it should take me here. Now if I go down here, it should take me back to where I was over here. And if I use it again, I return here. Now if I try using it from here, it should tell me I'm in that location and prevent the game from doing anything else. That keeps me from getting locked into this place. And if I exit, it takes me right back to where I were, where I was. And that's it. That's a simple way to track the player and send them to special maps if you need to and prevent them from getting locked into those maps. We will expand on this in future tutorials and do some other pretty neat stuff. But for now, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.